Okay, guys, so I think we're live. We'll double check that and see if we're live. Mm, doesn't look like it yet. What if I press wrong? What is going on? Uh, YouTube is not going live for me. No! Uh, can you guys see me? I don't know what's happening because YouTube, I've clicked it and it's not going live um what's happening problem oh we're live now i don't know what happened there with youtube uh for a minute there the youtube side wasn't showing up so um now it is so hopefully we're live uh, right, who was in first? Let's have a look. Uh, first off was HH Recycling, followed by Poo's Mate, followed by US Mike, Homestead Scrapper, and Paul Frost. All welcome in. Good to see you guys. Link is there for anyone that wants to come up. Uh, you're more than welcome. Um, I've been doing something that I think Ian Matthews will love. I've been um, taking plugs apart. And look at all them lovely fuses that, that I've collected up. Oh, there goes one onto the floor. Um, but all those lovely fuses that um, Ian Matthews will be so proud to have. Um, so there we go. Hey, Patrick Williams, welcome in. Good to see you. So I can add them fuses to, let me open a press over here. Do I have some just by hand here somewhere? No, I don't. I have another box of fuses somewhere in a press here. That um, at some stage, I don't know what I'm going to do with them fuses. Are the fuses, anything, any good in fuses worth collecting? When I say fuses, I'm not all big fuses. I'm all about these little 13 amp fuses. Uh, who does he come in there? Patrick Williams and uh, Christopher Jacobs, uh, followed by Jose. Welcome in. Good to see you. Um, uh, and to all from Florida to Ireland in just seconds. There you go. Yeah. Quickest flight across the Atlantic is by the um, scrap train or scrap plane, whichever way you're coming. And here is um, Mike cleaning his camera. <laughs> what can i say what can i say uh truck fan welcome in I like that. oh my god that is um a frightening scene to think that uh, mike was about to swallow us <laughs> i'm not even going to go there let's not go there let's just not go there Hey, I uh, see you scrapping. Um, who else is there? Did I see coming in? Oh, we have um, the, the shark has managed to land safely in Ireland. <laughs> hey, Mike, it doesn't matter how clean the camera is. We're still ugly, man. <laughs> you are true. That is a true statement. So, um, Shark, good to be back at the live streams. Oh yeah, very much so, very much so. I uh, I miss seeing everybody. I miss chatting with everybody. Um, <laughs> just been a crazy couple weeks though. Um, I was going to say, truck fan there. Uh, Shark is not mad at you. It's just that sharks and mine and most of the scrappers, we keep it politics out of it. We keep other activities out of the out of the camp. It's, we try and keep our lives about scrap. And maybe this one ventures off a bit more to other topics which is okay with me but um if you're on sharks one uh sharks is scrap related only correct sharky yeah yeah I, i'm not mad at you unless, truck the host, unless the host brings something up and then that's his choice <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i'm not i'm not mad at you it just wasn't something that i wanted to wanted to uh discuss on, you know on, on our channel it was kind of like out in left field for our channel so yeah um Scrapping, hoarding, tinkering, fun. Welcome in. And um, what's it? Uh, we keep the UFA. Uh, the, we keep the UFOs out. Well, it depends if if Ian Matthews turns up, then the flat earthers are all in. <laughs> <laughs> flat Earth all the way. Uh, with him. Yeah, I was saying, Ian would be so proud of me. Look at all the fuses I've been pulling out of plugs. He'd be so proud. Big box of fuses. <laughs> Shred. I Shred. I, that's where they'll probably end up because I don't think there's anything any good in these little small 13 amps. Some people say there's a little bit of silver in them, but I don't know. Um, so I found I found a little bin of fuses that I was going to send over to over to 
to uh, Ian, and I was just like, yeah, I don't have time for this crap. So into the sh into the little into a mailbox with little nuts and bolts to get to the scrapyard. That's weird, doesn't it? Hey, Pooh's mate, how are you? Um, uh, uh, no. You can't see the chat box. Okay. There was an issue there because when I hit live, I di it didn't show up on YouTube for me for thing. And I had to refresh the YouTube again uh, to get a few things. So YouTube may be glitching a bit at the moment or something. Um, so I don't know. Maybe maybe refresh your screen and see does it um, bring up your chat, chat for you on the YouTube side. It's working for me there. Now, sometimes you on the new i seen it on the phones you if you're on your phone who's made i'm not sure if you're on your phone you have to swipe when you go down to where the chat is you are it, comments show up first and if you swipe from right to left it should bring the chat up uh something new i've noticed today on mine really so Ooh, let me check that yeah. out if, if someone has left a comment the comment will show up first but then you swipe to the swipe to the if no one's left a comment then your chat shows up so i don't know has anyone left a comment or not already on the video so Sometimes if they leave a comment, oh no, she's on desktop. So just try refreshing Pooh's mate and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So on my phone, the chat is all down at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. But if, if someone had left a comment, the comment will show up first, and I've noticed now. And you have to swipe to the right to bring the live chat up. Interesting. Yeah, that's what I was noticing today because I was watching some live, and I went to click on comments, and I said, "Why well, is the comments working?" And then I looked; there was two dots, and if you swipe swipe to the from right to left it brought up the live chat you know uh, scrapping irish turned on subscribers only mode only channel subscribers of 13 minutes or longer can send messages the rest of you can bite me what what <laughs> every day scholars welcome in the us jill welcome in um who else was it there philip philip welcome <laughs> in americans forever harder i said hi to uh, if you haven't hit the like guys don't forget to hit it helps Get us out there maybe more scrappers might find us i found a few few new scrapping channels this week for some uh, i showed up on my uh, thing and they're not like they're not like new scrappers they have like four or five thousand subscribers and stuff like that people i'd never seen before and all of a sudden they just started appearing on my on my youtube suggestions so um yeah to see, see a few new ones showing up and that, like it's not like it's a new channel was already starting off if you four or five thousand subscribers you're being doing well on youtube um, I was disappointed. I seen Scrap It All was going live, and I thought, oh, he's going live today. Had a look. It was actually tomorrow he's going live. I thought he was going live at 6 today, and then I was going to say, oh, the Scrap Train is getting bigger. We were having one at 6, 7, 8, and 9 then. But um, Irish type, I'm going by now. Not your type. But he wasn't. Uh... It's one year uh, YouTube. Yeah. Um, I've watched last I'll be there days. now. Uh, closed it down and reopened several times. Okay, so Pooh's made us really have an issue with comments on any video. Hmm, strange. I think she upset somebody at YouTube. Yeah, um, just make sure your Google Chrome or if it's Google Chrome you're using, just make sure everything is up to date. Maybe that might be an issue, but it shouldn't be really. And just um, YouTube just automatically updates on their desktop usually, so um, that wouldn't be an issue. Sometimes you have to update them on your phones, but Usually on a desktop, it stays unless you have automatic updates turned off or something. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. That's a strange one. I haven't come across that um, before. Uh, yeah, so copper prices, Sharky. Did you read that article I sent you? Did you? Yeah, yeah. Very yeah, interesting. Very that within the, what is it again? Between now and, is it 2050, was it they were saying? Or was it 20? I'll be able to say now. But they're going to have to mine more copper in that length of time than they have in all time so far put together and they still won't have enough and they still won't have enough i understood it correctly yeah and they still won't have enough they're still going to be short yeah. so, um, like if you can imagine all the copper that's ever been mined in the world between now and Chuck is just checking the dates but um between now and whatever day Chuck tells us yeah in the next 30 years 30 years they're going to have to mine as much as they've ever mined so there you go that's that's um that's some amount of copper that's going to be needed. Uh, copper demand will rise to over 50 million tons a year by 2050. And we're already mining 21 million tons. At the yeah, moment. so for context, humankind has mined a total of 620 million tons of copper to date. And the mining industry currently only mines 22 million tons a year. 
All right. So what? Now I got to hang on to my copper instead of selling it again. Is that what's going on here? Uh, Americans' favorite holder is asking for what? Well, we're going to need it for. Um, it's it's not really going. See, people are saying, "Oh, electric cars are falling off. The people aren't buying electric cars." That's fair enough. They're not buying electric cars, but we still have the electric turbines going up for our um, our electricity to be generated by wind. We still have the uh, copper needed for the solar uh thing and that now they're saying because of ai and the way ai works and all these data centers and everything that's needed they're going to be taking off the slack of the copper that's going to be needed out there so um that that's where it's going you know people are saying oh why are copper prices rising if electric car sales are falling it's not it, the most the electric cars weren't going to be the big user of the copper it was going to be the wind turbines, the AI, and the solar, that sort of stuff was going to be the big, big users of the copper. And again, if you have China also beginning now to turn the corner economically and growth starting again in China, they're going to start swallowing copper up again for everything else as well. So, and, that, and you know, it's, 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 and again, even if there's no electric cars being made, other cars still need let need copper for their electrical wiring and their mo and their and their motors in there and stuff like that. So there's always going to be copper needed in every industry. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And there's just copper is copper is such a useful metal. You know, it's 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 conductivity, it's resistance to corrode. Uh, you know, once it gets a you know once it it's got that outer corrosion shell on it. Uh, it's it's a good stable metal. I mean, it's just such a useful metal that, yeah, the demand is just going to keep going crazy. Yeah, so Trump is asking, what do we do with our batteries? I uh, scrap them. Yeah, well, I, I was going to say, what what type of batteries for start? If it's lead acid batteries, bring them to the scrapyard. If it's lithium batteries, then that will be an issue, like the mobile phone batteries and stuff like that. So there is recycling centers here that you can bring them to and they'll recycle them but they do, you don't get anything for them so i don't know um, uh, so should i should i hoard this because that's, that's all i got oh yeah just hoard that hold on to that yeah, yeah. hang on to that. In, in 30 years time that's going to be like a hundred dollars you just threw away <laughs> look, at, look, at this, look at this new syrup they have here now oh that's a nice one yeah oh. that out. you see how crunchy it is yeah <laughs> it's supposed to melt when you put it on like your pancakes or your french toast or whatever so uh, uh, yeah if you put it on your copper pancakes and it says yeah i do the same um not, not putting them on my pancakes i'm all about uh, everyday or um what's called uh, everyday solders common that yeah bring them if they're lead acid go to scrapyard if they're if they're uh, lithium irons they go to the transfer centers um uh ever scrap lead is not weird lead is lead is lead the other ones yeah. lead's yeah. pretty common what did i i just took a bunch of lead in i got 23 cents a pound for soft lead yeah so you finally got the lead out of your ass <laughs> no i've still got that uh, i didn't want to get too carried away uh, i seen that um watch called ian matthews now has his wife yeah. involved in the uh, youtube button <laughs> <I saw that. laughs> <laughs> he's, he's 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 roped her in she's probably hoping he doesn't retire because she's going to go oh no if you retire he's going to be every day come out here and hold the camera i want you to say this now i want you to do that she's just praying he never retires <laughs> yeah. poor lady you know, the poor the poor woman is saying oh please please don't end retire i have to put up with this imagine come out here kathy hold the camera i want you now to pretend you just walked out and caught me doing something <laughs> Can you hand me that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, watch, yeah, there you go. Yeah, what uh, what's going on in there? Um, Homestead Scrapper is getting 50 cents for lead. Um, so again, oh, where, that, where is that? Where are you at, Homestead Scrapper? Uh, in in NY. So, what, what's in NY, New York? New York. I don't know, I presume. Oh, he's yeah. in New York. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I presume it's New York, they're saying. Uh, poor Kathy is right. <laughs> Uh, no problem, truck, truck fan. Get your munchies, get your feed. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, 
lead weight is worth more for sea fishing. Yeah, you can send the lead weights to guys that do sea fishing. You probably get more than scrap price if if that's something you have a contact with in that in that sort of industry. Um, is Ian Swipe? No, oh, Ian was t in his last little short video he did. He was out doing copper wire, and he had Kathy holding the holding the uh, camera and uh, stuff like that for him. You know. Uh, do you know? I've never found any lead. I've always got excited when I see uh, roofers gift, but they are far too savvy to leave it behind. Yeah, not too many roofers will leave the lead behind. They'll take it in their van and cash it in. It's it's cash yeah. for them. Yeah. So I have, oh yeah, I already, I had to pack it up. I have a black powder pistol uh, that I used to shoot. So I would, uh, I would take, you know, I would look for lead so that I could make balls for my, for my, uh, to yeah, when, I, when, I, when I was younger, we used to use the lead for fishing, making little weights for our fishing. So uh, yeah. we used to melt, melt the lead and mold it into little lead uh, to go around the fishing line. So stuff like that. Uh, so car batteries are 50 cent a kilo here in Ireland. So that's roughly 25 cent a pound for the for the uh, American people uh, who go, who do everything by the pound in the inferior system. Um, you can use dynamite for fish. You've, you've been listening to that chucklehead too uh, too much. <laughs> uh, well, you did admit earlier that you prefer the metric system. <laughs> oh, I do. yeah. I mean, it makes more sense. I got no arguments there, but you know, measurement systems are measurement systems. So you yeah. know, you, you what you're, you know, what it. And it was funny because when I was in high school, the U.S. was on this big metric conversion, so we all had to study metric and learn metric, and then we never converted. <laughs> well, at least you had a grounding in metric. Um, that's a big battery, 104 pound weight battery. That's a big battery. <laughs> um, do you collect up your car batteries if you get them sharp for a while? Do you have a good lot of them? Or will you just, when you're going to the scrapyard, whatever you have, you bring with you that day? Or do you do you say, oh, I'll, I'll wait till I've got 20 batteries or I'll wait till I've got 10? No, I, I, I would just take them in as I got them. Um, okay. Now, I, yeah, here in Florida, because car batteries are considered uh, controlled items, uh, the average peddler only can take in two at a time. Okay. Uh, with my SMR license, I was allowed to take in as many as I wanted. So, uh, you know, I would, I would just take them in as I got them, you know, a dozen, a half dozen. I did have one very interesting situation where I did a pickup and I ended up with enough batteries from power supplies mm -hmm. to put a complete layer on a pallet. I mean, it was just, just I don't know how many batteries it was. It was a ridiculous number of batteries. So I put the pallet in the back of the shark mobile and I started stacking the batteries on it. So when I got to the scrap yard, they could use the forklift to pull it out. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you talking just a standard four foot by four foot pallet or was it a yeah. Yeah. okay well then yeah. i have a pallet out in my yard at the moment that has two layers of them batteries on it <laughs> okay cool yeah that's a heavy pallet <laughs> that's a heavy pallet <laughs> so they have the two layers I've, I've double layered it now so i have within power supply batteries um oh god here we go here we go oh my god there goes the neighborhood Good evening. Good evening. When do you need these um, fuses sent over to you? Twelfth and never. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't you haven't taught Kathy how to scrap those fuses yet? Tell me this now, as Kathy said that you're not retiring after you making her do that video, because I guarantee you she's thinking. If he retires, I'm going to have this every bloody day. Come out here, Kathy. Pretend you're walking in and catching me doing this. Pretend I'm after doing this, Kathy. You know, that's what you're going to be at. Oh, Lord, it was quite funny, that. <laughs> she, she didn't quite. They were a bit ad hoc. You know, it was like, Kathy, come out and just film this. <laughs> what did you say? Slowly. Being the wife of a scrapper's, lonely the life of a scrapper's wife. 
<laughs> she got that wrong, you know, but never mind. <laughs> Don't worry. When you when you when you ever when you retire and you're at that a hundred times a day, she'll get it right. <laughs> anyway, Shark, nice to see you back up and running. I hope your family emergency resolved itself. It is it is working itself out. The person involved uh, had their had the required surgery and came through okay, and is now in a rehabilitation center. And we're trying to get them healthy again. And so things are moving in the right direction. Uh, watch what's in there. Uh, I take them in when uh, you're scrapping in a shed. You don't want you don't need car batteries. If a screwdriver or anything fell on it, it, it could explode. Uh, plus plus fire. Yeah, yeah. I keep the batteries outside in an open space, and if any of them short out, uh, they're not near anything to to. And at this stage, I don't. If I have them been for a long time, so I say they're well discharged. But um, you can never be too safe. Okay, do you remember um, Snobby Scrap Picker's uh, battery wall he used to have? Yeah, that was some amount of batteries. I think that was possible. I think that was possibly one of the reasons why. He stopped coming on YouTube. I think it was uh, too many people seeing what he had. <laughs> well, yeah, I might have to give it up because I don't want people knowing I have all these fuses and they might come and steal them. <laughs> they're going to come tear down your shed and take their pallets back is what they're going to do. <laughs> 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 I threatened them with that one last week. <laughs> what palette are you on about? <laughs> oh, I, hello, so, everyone, about hello, everyone, hello everyone in chat. Uh, so, even, uh, all that wire you were doing in your video is that wire um, just a fresh pickup, or have that has that been lying around for a while? Fresh pickup. Fresh pickup. Not too bad. Hey, simple man. Oh, fresh pickup. <laughs> He's not giving any more information away. But you know, I mean, the old anvil yard on last week it was brass. They got up to four pound ten, and heavy copper was six pound thirty. Bear in mind, I weigh I weighed my bright in at six pound thirty five. Normally about a forty pence per kilogram difference, meaning meaning. Uh, Bright copper would have been around about six pounds seventy. That was enough to make a man cry. I was going to say, see, Shark is thinking about cash in his in now when the prices are high. But I don't oh, know. Patrick. look at if you need if you need if for me as a hobbyist, I couldn't care less. I if, if when I do sell it, whatever I get for it, I do get first. That's it. I haven't even stripped down the wire. I've out the back yet all the wire. Yeah. I haven't cleaned up all the copper I have yet. So um. I, whatever, if, if I sell it in six months' time and the price is down, it's down. If I sell it in six months' time and the price is up, well, then it's up. But um, if I, you know, if you're trying to make a living from it, you know, it can be a bit, a bit sore to sell it this week and then three days later, it's all of a sudden it's a, it's another 30, 30p or 30 cent a pound. I, I believe Shark Scrapper because normally I, I avidly watch his stocks and shares on, on, on the week before and he were missing so I was in, I was in the dark <laughs> sorry about that man <laughs> it's all shark's fault that you cashed out your copper is it I needed and in that instance I needed the space you know it was decorated and I, I couldn't move in here for it it had to it had to go so you, you get paid if you return your pallets is it um and and you buy them for sixteen. Oh yeah, I bought mine. I that, yeah, I bought them pallets. Yeah, yeah, I bought them. <laughs> Off a guy who was selling Rolexes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, one of them CPUs, right. um, that my Do you need a pallet? Do you need some pallets? I got some pallets here in my jacket in my London <laughs> fog. <laughs> yeah, big master. You, you go, brings you around the corner. Come around the corner and stack of pallets like. <laughs> No, you're simple, Thanks, man. man. And that's that right, yeah, like top right hand corner. Well, that's a problem because we don't know which corner's your right hand corner. The top right hand corner is going to be there. He's on about Mike because of the beard gone, you see. <laughs> oh, right. I see. Oh, it's. Uh... Oh, 
Every day Solis tell me look up look, look up scrap prices on Tinter Web. <laughs> I like your little um scrap spider web and the little spider. Is he still there or has he moved on? It's still there. <laughs> The effort you to go attack for videos. Man, did I disturb a few spiders uh, when I was cleaning the cage this last week? Oh my God, I got yeah, I had so cage. many upset spiders. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were no good. They're not copper spiders. You need the copper spiders. Yeah, no, these weren't. These were just regular old, good typical Florida spiders. Uh, be careful with your uh, yes. usually covered them and paint them. I think he means, um, careful with your chest, our serious cover. I don't know what you meant there. <laughs> I lost that bit. I don't know what that is. Uh, it, it might be that, your... that blue paint you, cho you chose uh, to paint them with, might be, late. yeah. Well, you see. You see now, in, they, they've actually managed, to, well, they haven't got quite there yet, but they will manage to turn themselves into sheets of plywood. It's going to be amazing when they turn into a sheet of plywood. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of plastic uh, pallets, I may have um, some of them as well. <laughs> But um, I don't know uh, what's the story with him, are. Well, they, they go, I find that they go brittle in the sun after a good while. Yeah, well, I'm thinking about using them in my shed as part of the flooring. Yeah, that's so a good them, idea. Yeah, put them down on the flooring, you know. Uh, the only thing is if they get wet, they'll be kind of slippy. So then I'm thinking about putting some sort of matting over them um, as well. So the, the advantage in you can lift the mat and sweep the plastic pallets if, and get all your stuff out. That was what I was thinking about doing. I don't know. Oh, now I know what he said. Chip palette. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know what you're on about them palettes. Never. Ne I don't, don't even have any. Never seen a one of them type palettes in my life. Tell you what. This I, is just, I, uh, I took back a half a dozen palettes uh, this last week with one of my scrapyard runs. Because uh, when I would get computers from this yard, you know, they'd stack them on the pallet. And so I just I just ended up with a whole bunch of pallets stacked up in the corner. I'm like, all right, time to get rid of these. So I took them back to the guys that gave them to me. <laughs> oh, aren't you the good, honest person? <laughs> I just had to get rid. Of, I had to get them out of the way. You know, I had to get rid of them. So I figured oh, I'll just take them back to those guys because I know they're you know they need them. They use them all the time. So plastic pallets sell around here for sell for around uh, five to ten dollars. Okay. Uh, plastic pallets is a great use of plastic if they are made from recycled plastic. Yeah, well, I, I'll be making good use of them as well because they'll be working as a floor. <laughs> so uh, they'll, they'll come into use. Ian, how much copper are you? How's your copper hoard coming on now again? It's coming on. It's coming on. See, he, he has gone mad now because he knows prices are high and he is just stripping wire like there's no, no tomorrow. I, it's got to be stripped by this Friday. It has to be. Well, are, you cash, are you cashing it in this Friday again? If the price is still high, yes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's it. It's all I'm doing tonight. I've two tiny pieces of that twin and earth to do. That was a nice bag, load of wire. Did that come from your electrical source? It does. It does. Oh yeah. So he go he goes through a lot of wire. He's a busy man. Look at him. He won't give anything away. Uh, what today? Uh, I sold my copper yesterday. It was a good payment. Oh, see, all you all you big boys, sure, simple man. Tomorrow you'll have just as much copper again. I've never seen anyone get as much copper as Simple Man does. <laughs> it's his, it, out of his job, out of his work. Because he steals it. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't kidding nobody. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, day, so this has got so much to strip. It, it can be gone, can't it? You know, you just look at it, it's a big mound of it, and you think. 
Yeah, but then when you look afterwards, you see that lovely color of the copper piled in a bucket or in a bag. Then all you see is like um, ching signs in your eyes. <laughs> it, it's a very pretty color. I I find that I I like looking at copper more than I do gold. I just, yeah, I, I do there's like. Something about, there's something about that copper color that I just I find it so appealing. So the turn oh, we will die in the basement. Hey, Ralph. Welcome here. The whole motley lot is complete. <laughs> I'm a motley. Not a motley. A motley. I, I, I heard something about copper prices being up. So yeah. this, this is this is what I found. Look look at this. Can you tell? Can you tell? Come on. Copper. <laughs> my 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 big aluminium cable. Color it, turning, it <laughs> turning it into copper. <laughs> and then I'm gonna turn this in. Yeah, I'm sure that'll work. Yeah, yeah, yeah should should blend, work. Blend it me. I was a bit disappointed with that big copper rod I got, which weren't copper. Yeah, but it, it stuck to your copper. Oh line. yeah, that that thing that was. Uh, that thing yeah. that was a, a, a steel, basically, yeah. Yeah, I think it's an earthen rod. Well, it, it is. It's an earthen rod. Yeah, but they just painted it a copper color for you. Well, I would say not painted. It's been electroplated. Yeah. So. Why, why yeah, would you bother electroplating it? Just either leave it as it was or... Um... It's, a dro it's a dross, wouldn't it? Well... Earthen rod, you're banging it in the ground. Protective mm. layer? I don't know. HH Recycling has a uh, good uh, comparison. It's like redheads and blondes with gold and copper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do Returnables, we're getting a lot of returnables, lady. Over here, the people are giving off a bit about the um, the new deposit scheme they have here in Ireland because people are saying it's extra work now that people have to do that they didn't have to do before because recycling, most people are like, I, I know I just recycled my aluminium cans or whatever. If I wasn't saving them up, I, I was putting them into the recycling bin. So now I have to go and collect them up, bring them back to a shop, put them into a machine, get my money back where I didn't have all that hassle to do before and I was still recycling. So I don't know, it's, it's, it's um, it would it'd be a different thing that if recycling cans were thrown all over the streets here, but I, I you wouldn't have really seen uh, aluminium cans thrown everywhere here. Um, so I don't know, a lot of people just used to recycle them in their, in the recycling bins at home. So I, do, I don't know why they introduced it, to be honest. But maybe maybe it was a, a bigger issue in the cities or something. Maybe but down around here where, where people had their, everyone has their own bins, um, recycling bins. People just just throw their cans in there uh, for recycling. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe the city people were throwing the cans when they'd be finished drinking them, throw them on the streets or whatever. Maybe that's why they introduced it. Yeah, uh, they, probably why they did that over here because they were all over the place. I, yeah. I collected cans to melt uh, when I started, and within a couple of weeks, I had 23 big totes full of flattened cans. Wow. And I couldn't even open the door to my, my uh, uh, basement anymore all the way. And then all of a sudden, I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm going to get rid of all of this. And then I'll just turn it in for scrap. And now yeah, there's returns on them. And now I have boxes full of cans that are still complete in my basement. But that's yeah, about but like to... 30 or 40 euros worth. Yeah. But, you know, but I find myself sometimes now I forget about the returnables and I just throw them in a recycle bin. And then I go, oh, no, I just threw away money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Irish, your, your returnable program, do you have to put the can in whole? So that it can read yeah. the barcode, or yeah, can you it, the um, do I have any here? I don't because these cans I have here aren't they, these aren't one of the recyclable ones. These are in a multi packs, and um, they they hadn't they haven't they months haven't been issued yet with the new recyclable thing. I don't have one to show you, but there's a little hour on it, and the machine reads that when it goes in, 
and then um, you get your 15 cent or 30 cent back yeah. depending on what yeah. you pay uh, for it. depending on the size of the can and the size of the bottle there's different rates and um, you can bring that voucher then it comes out in a paper voucher you bring that into the store and you can either get money or you can use it as a store credit you know right but whatever shop you like we say here they have them at the supermarkets the machines so whatever supermarket you bring your can to that's the, where you have to cash in. You can't bring that voucher to any other store. You can only be cashed in at that store. Yeah, so. yeah well, you can, yeah. you can cash for it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. If you want cash, you just go to the tills and get cash. But most people don't. They just go get their shop and get whatever they're getting and just use the voucher against what they're buying. Yeah. Oh. They had, um, when I lived on Cape Cod, the glass bottles were returnables. You paid a deposit on the glass bottles. And uh, you take them back to the liquor store. And you'd have the you'd have the one place where the machines were, and you'd put the bottles in, and it would read them, and then you'd get your voucher, and then that you know you took that in, and then when you bought more beer or wine or whatever, you got it, you know that got taken off. But it was they'd always had that stale beer smell yeah. uh, <laughs> in the, in that room where the machines were, because you know it just it smashes the bottle after you put it in there, and it reads it. It smashes the bottle, and so you always had that stale beer smell in there. Oh I, yeah, I, I can't wait to the summer near these machines because during the summer at these machines, I guarantee you, there's going to be nests of wasps and bees at them because they're putting the cans in. There's still a bit of bit of coke or whatever left in the can. They squish it down. The next thing you're going to get that smell and the sugar attracting the bees during the summer. So you try and put your returnables into the machines during the summer, you'll be attacked by a hive of wasps coming out at you. <laughs> so you will. Um, that's an interesting one that Philip has there. There's a yard here that has started buying plastic. Now, Philip, you're going to have to give us more information. What type of plastic? Is it certain standard of plastic or is it any type of plastic you're buying? Do you have to sort it into different colours, um, different types? Interesting. That's because... As a scrapper, we all know when you scrap something, there's a lot of plastic left over. So there is. Yeah. So that'd be interesting if scrap yards are looking at that. That could be um, very interesting because you know yourself, when you take apart a vacuum cleaner or take apart anything, the amount of plastic on them nowadays, you know. So, Philip, give us more information. <laughs> I know, I know uh, uh, double glazing plastic people buy that yeah well i find it difficult that, that scrap yards are going to buy plastic because they're stopping taking televisions washing machines uh not washing machines vacuum cleaners so well that's kind of to do with other issues not just because of the plastic on them it's to do with the we um uh, what you call regulation that a lot of countries have signed up for to make sure that all electrical goods go through a certain stream, a recycling stream. So same here in Ireland, the vacuum cleaners and uh, wash machines and dryers and fridges and all that go through a separate stream than a scrapyard So uh, for recycling. So it may be to do with that that the scrapyards don't take them anymore because maybe they're not. You have to have a special license to handle them and them licenses cost more and there's a lot more regulation to do with them begin uh, stuff like that so maybe that might be a reason some of the scrapyards have stopped taking white goods and stuff like that you know yeah it's a a lot of discussion here in the u.s uh because our recycle laws are all over the place you know they're they're every state every county every city uh can have their own you know differences and yeah one of the big discussions is this how do we get the manufacturers to be responsible for an end-to-end -end product right we want the manufacturer to be responsible for taking that flat screen tv back at the end of its life uh, rather than it going in the trash well then you know and and, and 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 the same with cans and bottles and plastic and so you get this this these weird mishmash of returnable laws deposit laws uh, the scrapyards can take this, but not that. It just it it's very disjointed over here. Yeah, no, that's the one thing about here. It's the same rule uh, for every every um, every county in the in the in the country. They all they all have to 
you have your re recycling, you have your general purpose recycling, you can't put electrical goods in your general purpose. So I couldn't put a microwave in my regular recycling bin, can't put a toaster, can't put anything with a plug essentially into regular recycling. It has to go back to the, to an electrical store where you, that sells the type of appliances and they, they are collected from there by a company that's in charge of the whole country recycling of the um, electrical goods. So that's yeah. the way over here, you know. Hmm. Um, let's stop. Um, uh, they won't lose an awful lot of customers if they stop taking electronics. What they'll notice is that a lot more people will break down the electronics to smaller so that it's Instead of bringing in a whole microwave, they'll just break down the outer casing so they have the steel and they'll break down whatever. Maybe that might happen a lot more. Scrappers maybe, uh, but the average person is not going to. No, the average they person... They don't even know how a screwdriver to... works. Yeah, the average person is just going to bring it back to the store for the... The same thing's going to happen in England. It's, it's happened here in Ireland and it's happened out in... It's in a lot of European countries. You'll be able to bring back your microwave. When you buy a new microwave, you bring back the old microwave to the store that you're buying your microwave off. They have to hold on to it, a company will come and take it away and it's recycled. So that, yeah, that's, that's, that's really. what's going to happen. We'll do that. We, we'll take your own, we'll take your, yeah. your goods off you. Um, yeah. Well, see, that's, it's already, it's already starting to move in. I think you've signed up to it as well, but you're not kicking it in fully for a couple of years in England. We've been doing it now for 14, 15 years. It works really well. It, it, you don't see any fridges thrown in ditches anymore. You don't see any, um, old broken cookers thrown outside in in fields or any of that carry on people dumping them they just the, the store that you're buying your new item off will take away the old one for you so you don't need to be dumping them or trying to hide them or whatever so it works that kind of way a lot more stuff does get recycled that they usually end up in ditches and fields you know yeah well they'll do that here when they deliver your fridge but you have to pay to have it hauled away yeah. So it kind of defeats the purpose because then you get people that say, "Well, I'm not, I'm not going to give you another. I just spent two thousand dollars on a refrigerator. Why am I giving you another fifty bucks to haul away my old?" Well, it, over here in Ireland, the price of the fridge has already incorporated that in it. So if you see yeah. price two thousand, um, two thousand euro, that includes the recycling fee. So that means oh, yeah. it can't be charged yeah. anymore. That's the yeah, most. Yeah, we haven't gotten it there yet. Yeah, you know, you can't be charged the prices. Well, she don't even include your taxes on your prices when you go to the shell looking at stuff. That drives me mad altogether. You go, uh, you go and you go, oh, yeah, that's that's a thousand thousand dollars. Go up to the counter, oh, that's twelve hundred dollars. Where, where did the extra two hundred dollars come from? Tax. Why isn't it marked on the price? <laughs> yeah. It's marked yeah. over here as well. <laughs> You know, include the tax on the final price. The price on the shelf should be the price you're paying at a counter. Never mind this plus taxes rubbish. If you don't know what tax rate, from as you said already, Chuck, from state to state, everything changes. It's in Amer in your states, the taxes are all different. You could buy yeah. this and pay ten cent tax. It's just go over the border and it's twenty cent tax. Go somewhere else, it's five cent tax. Oh, crazy stuff. <laughs> it, oh, it's it's yeah. I mean, we uh, I don't think that we've we have. I don't think we found anything that we're not willing to tax over here. I don't mind the tax, but at least have it marked on the shelf. Make it so, consistent and make make it logical. Well, at least you know, right? That make kind of makes sense. that kind of joke is going to be one dollar. You know, including taxes, one dollar. Uh, every you know, and the next. I don't care if it's one twenty in the next place, but at least I know it's one twenty when I go to the counter. Nothing worse than going up. Oh, that was a dollar, and you have a dollar in your hand, and they go, oh, that's one dollar twenty. Oh Jesus! <laughs> you know that drove me mad when I when I was traveling around America. Uh, you know, it just drove me mad. I go to the counter, I say, I'd have worked out my head, right? That's twenty dollars. They think, oh, that's twenty five dollars. What? Where's the five dollars coming from? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand why we don't just show what the price is with the tax yeah. included. Um, yeah, I because it's you know it's. Um, I, I I wrestle with that all the time. It's like because we're all paying the same tax. Yeah. Um, you know, if we're buying it from a store, we're all going to pay the same tax at that store. It's not like some of us pay tax and yeah. some of us don't. Oh, yeah. You know. So I, but I think it might be because we do have discounts that 
the, so for instance, as a retired Navy, I get military discounts at some course. And so that lowers the price of that item. And so when I check out, my tax is based on the lower price of the item, not the yeah, price. Surely, that yeah, but surely nowadays, everything is computerized. They, they walk up, you press a button on a till, and it automatically can do all that. You don't need to, to you know, it goes, oh, yeah, a senior citizen, here's our uh, minimum. Irish, 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 they're they're not that far, far yet. yet. They yeah. haven't advanced that far yet. No, <laughs> but you still... My, but the point is, you're saying that the price on the shelf should be the price on the shelf. Yeah, but, but I don't mind discounts. I understand discounts. If you, I, I, I like over here, we have that. The supermarkets will have a discount for or might on a Thursday. They might give a ten percent discount for anyone over the age of sixty-five, pension age. They might say we have a pensioner's discount, and the pensioner still go still says one something on the thing. He might go up and get ten percent off, which is ten cent. That that's grand because that's what his, his discount is. It doesn't need to be marked on the shelf. That's his discount. I just want to know what the price of the item is before I go to the counter. If they want to give me a discount when I get to the counter, fair enough. I I love it. More than what's marked. I don't mind it being less than what's marked, but I hate it being more than what's marked. <laughs> hey, Kevin. We're just so used to that that method, we don't oh, give it a second spot anymore. <laughs> Don't worry, you, you'll catch up with the rest of the world eventually. <laughs> as soon as you get rid of the inferior system. Oh, don't mention that. I already, yeah, had, yeah, to, sorry, I already, had, to, I already had to go with that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but, by the way, Kevin, welcome in. How's everyone? Uh, Tick -tick He's going to do something else. Uh, pair up, truck band, to have, have fun doing something else. <laughs> He's leaving again. <laughs> truck band leaves and comes, leaves and comes, which is allowed. The door is always open. You can come in and you can leave. Sometimes we shut the door and don't allow people in, but um, not not a lot of time. You have to be very very bold to get shut out. <laughs> By the way, Kevin, how how was your planning for your trip to Ireland coming along? Uh, it's coming along with def with we're definitely in Dublin on I think it was the 13th 16th sixteen you told me the 17th well I have to change my team no 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 we we leave on the 16th oh yeah you're right on the get over there until the morning of the 17th Oh yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I was going to say it's the seventeenth. I had I had arranged to be in Dublin. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then, and then for that guy over in the far corner, uh, I will be, <laughs> I'll be in Edinburgh on the eighteenth, the night of the seventeenth, but all day of the eighteenth. And where do you go from there? Is it up to Inverness? North, not Inverness, mm -hmm. but somewhere other than Inverness. And we eventually get to Inverness, but not the first couple days. Well, let's hope we've not got any train strikes. Oh, train uh, we have a car rented, so. Oh, yeah, so it doesn't matter if you have a car rented. rented our own transportation. I, I want to learn how to ride on the right side of the road. Yeah, so every day, right. I don't live near Scotland, but it's only... What did I say? It was sixteen pound on the train. I can afford sixteen pound. Oh, can you? Can you? Sixteen pound, you can afford postage stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sixteen pounds. Okay. That's probably sixteen letters sent out to international. Oh no, it's not like that over here, is it? Why? Not like. Not like the forever stamps, one 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 price, whatever country over here depends on what country you're sending it to on oh, the no. cost. That's right. Oh no, over here it's um it's the one price international, so it doesn't matter where international, but it's not one part it's I think it's nearly is it two euro now nearly to send an international. Yeah, well come yeah. on, son. who wants to go to Scotland? <laughs> I mean Yeah, those things, yeah. Global forever. Yeah. I got I got so a I, couple of those. I, I can hold on to that stamp. On them. I can hold on to that stamp for twenty more years, 
and it would still cover the postage at then at the then rate. He just to live in Scotland. Well, he's nearly as tight as a Scottish man. <laughs> so. These are the international ones we have. It, it just says one. Uh, every and, day. Uh, you have to come on and we meet. That, that's our ugly ass fat hat king. Is that, um, is that one like one euro or is that? No, it's just, just one, as in one unit. And okay. uh, you, you weigh it up uh, and you, you put the, all the information on the website. Uh, and then it says one or two or three, and then okay. that's how many you put on. Okay. Oh no, when, so I, when I said that one, might said, actually change. Yeah, when I said one uh, price for international, I meant by letter. If you were doing parcels, it could be you could need ten stamps to put on it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You know. Well, for oh, a letter, it, it, it's just the one. If it's yeah, below it, twenty grams, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which um, a letter usually is. Yeah, no, it's um, unless they use those envelopes that have like the cardboard backing in. <laughs> if you filled your if you filled your um, box with helium, it would make it lighter on the scales for you. <laughs> that actually might work. Just just fill it with uh, just put a helium balloon in there. Just yeah, see what like it lifted up a bit. See yeah. what it lifted up a bit. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, it'll make it light. Yeah. Make How are you? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 you know, you go, they go, oh, actually, we're going to have to pay you for this. <laughs> but then again, is it worth the helium? <laughs> yeah. Two minutes from town, six pound on the bus. Every day. Someday. Maybe. Um, we're not so bad in the great in Greater Manchester because Andy Burnham's having this northern tier to take thing with with london uh it's two pound on the bus for any journey yeah i i, I was when i'm in liverpool it's two if i if i use the bus in liverpool whenever i go over there's two two pound for any journey didn't matter um so at least you know getting on the bus yeah it's going to cost me two pounds it's going to whatever there's no need to be thinking oh is this going to be ten pound is this going to be whatever price, the price was stupid it was like i live I, I could give them three or four pounds. It wouldn't matter to me. <laughs> I only live about three miles away from town, and it, it was getting up to three pound fifty to catch the bus. Hey, UK. Okay? Just wouldn't do it. You'd go in the car, wouldn't you? It's cheaper. Yeah. To yeah. Yeah. Look, at it. if you want people to stop using their cars as much, make bus travel and train travel affordable, and then people will go. Oh, is it worth filling up the car every week to go? And when I can get into town and back home from work for two quid, then all of a sudden people aren't going to be using their cars as much. It makes sense, like. But again, who are we to talk sense? Because if they're not, if you're not using your car, they're not making as much tax on you because you, of all the petrol tax they put on petrol and diesel. <laughs> true, true. There's water in here, dang it. And road tax for your car and. Oh, that would disappear all of a sudden, wouldn't it? Well, they're, they're actually bringing you now to tyre tax now, aren't they? What? Tyre tax? A tyre tax for, oh, yeah. for, for electric vehicles. Oh, the electric vehicles? Oh, that's going to be fun over here. Because they're in, much in heavier Jersey? than a normal car. In, uh, oh, in, it's road tax. That's what we have, yeah. Yeah. In, in New Jersey, when you buy an electric car now, you pay an additional $250 for road use because you're not buying petrol to pay for the road yeah you have to you get a four-year registration when you buy a brand new car so they hit you for 250 dollars the first year 260 the second 270 the third and 280 the fourth each year it goes up ten dollars and you have to pay that at the time of purchase well hey bad wow. news if you were living if you were living in ireland you'd be paying your tax on your fuel for your petrol cars or diesel cars plus you still pay road tax so yeah. um over yeah. here we I, my road tax is 200 and whatever a year for for the car plus i still pay i don't get i still pay extra so that's not new over here so if we had to pay for electric cars it's the exact same what we're already doing it's not yeah. like a next charge we're already paying road tax and we pay tax on fuel uh, yeah. as well so yeah. you know um it, it's it's just is you, you don't realize um, sometimes you're, you're complaining about taxes over in America or whatever. You have a very easy compared to Ireland or UK oh. and other European countries. Like we pay tax on tax on taxes. 
<laughs> well, over here it's called double taxation without representation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, you get your wages, you pay tax. You go out and you buy shopping, you pay VAT on your goods. You mm -hmm. put the petrol in your car, you pay tax on that and duties. Yep. You pay tax then to tax your car to drive it. You pay tax when you bought the car. You pay tax when you sell the car. <laughs> you just pay tax. I mean, you want to go on holiday. You, you, and you bought to have insurance, and then they brought out an insurance tax. And, and it's, yeah. it's mandatory that you have insurance. So you've got to pay that tax. You want to go on holiday? There's, a, there's an earth, earth, earth tax. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, heard, I heard something about Canada. Uh, the, the prime minister wants to tax every homeowner based on how much blacktop they have on their property. Because that blacktop is off gassing into the atmosphere, causing bad, bad air. Well, we, we already have a tax. There's a, there's a property tax here already in Ireland. There's a property tax in England. You pay yeah. tax on the size of your size of your buildings. Right, but this is an additional tax based on how much blacktop pavement you have on your property from the street up to your garage. Just put some what's called on it, astroturf. Make it look like it's green. Yeah, it's grass. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I've got gardens. There's always a way to beat the system. Yeah, just well, just just put a garden there. Then you've solved your problem. Park My way to beat the system is to make sure that every month more money comes in than that goes out. So I'm good. <laughs> well, that's what we all try and make sure that we have more going out, uh, coming in than goes out. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot about the sugar tax as well. <laughs> I forgot about that. We sugar that tax? Here as well. Really? Yeah, it's on minerals. So if you buy Coke that has sugar in it, so Coke Zero, I buy this can and it was one, one euro. If I bought the regular Coke, it'd be one euro, 10 cent. 10 cents oh, really? for the uh, sugar tax. I've it's to encourage people. That. It's to encourage people not to buy that. sugary drinks, to oh. rather th just use the non-sugar. So I don't know. Anyhow, it's nearly time to go over to everyday solar. So um, e oh, really? Mike, what's your plan for the week? Uh, scrapyard run tomorrow. Middle of the week, I have to go about 30 freaking miles from here and pick up some air conditioning crap. I don't even know what it is. I'll be a waste of my time and life. And okay. that's about it. And board, 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 board. I was going to say you're planning to run to board sort. So. Friday or Monday. Not okay. Sure. Okay. You've been you've been making a lot of runs to board sort. See how busy you are. Imagine this time last year, you were, weren't you? Like you were saying, oh, I think about giving this up. There was nothing coming in. It was all quiet, and you were whatever. And now look still, at you. I'm still ready to give it up. Look at you now. Such a change. And <laughs> yeah. Just to show how things can change yeah. in a year. Freaking mess. You know? That's all I got is a big ass mess. Yeah, but that's where there's a mess, there's money. Um, <laughs> so but on a good note, on a good night, my uh, third head is going away. Good. <laughs> third? Yeah. <laughs> What's that? You got more heads than a child. Last, don't even ask about the second one, all right? <laughs> At least somebody caught that. <laughs> Um, okay, Shark Scrapper, what's your plan? Uh, we got showing scheduled for the house. The pod is showing up to pack up the shark cage. And uh, some, somewhere in all this insanity, I'm going to try to get some videos up for the week, too. Okay. Uh, Grandpa Kevin, have you anything coming out on YouTube or just planning no, your trip? I, I have to go to the accountant tomorrow and, and get my real estate, my income taxes back. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm anticipating that I'm going to have to work hard this week, but who knows? Okay. You might have to do some work. Does that be a change? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah well, that'd, be, that'd be unique. <laughs> that'd be unique. Um, Ralph, what's your plan? Any videos coming? No, no videos. Um, just work. Uh, okay. I, I have been doing some scrapping and taking apart of uh, things in the garage. And my car is at the shop uh, at the moment, so I cannot use it to go to do a scrapyard run. But when it when it's done somewhere along the next week, I will probably stuff it full of crap and just do a scrapyard run and maybe film a and, bit of it. And then he'll have to pay a, a mechanic. I got it right tax. Yeah, I fixed it. Tax. Yes, I <laughs> fixed it right tax. <laughs> no, I'll just uh, use the scrap money to pay for the fixing of the car. Uh, it's me. What's your plan? It's me. I'm just stripping cable all week. There'll be no film, no filming. Okay. 
and then tomorrow night I'll probably go at work and there'll be a humongous amount of scrap. And I think this is worth filming. We'll see. Yeah, I was going to say that. As it comes. You, say, you say there's no videos coming out, and then you'll have three videos in a row. Bang, bang, bang. You, you never know. know what happens, do you? You know. And you'll have yeah. poor Kathy. You'll have poor Kathy's head wrecked to do these films. So anyhow, it's gone time to shut down the stream. Head over to Solars. The link is going to be in there. I have a video coming out on Thursday. Should be live next. Ooh, um, countdown next, just started. Next Sunday, and um, put the link in just there for everyday Solars. So you can head over there. If you haven't hit the like, please do. Catch you all next Sunday, Ralph. Scrap you later. Scrap you all later. <laughs> and see you.